Well, with that encouraging note on the fiscal side, I, I am going to ask uh, our last, our very last free-for-all victim to come up here. It's Andrew Lopez. Andrew, you're here. Okay. Uh, Andrew has a modest proposition. He wants to raise a billion dollars to do something very essential, bring Toronto another hockey club. Thank you, Moses. It's really a privilege to be here tonight, especially in front of this crowd. And I'll start by saying that even if I pull off this project I'm about to tell you about, on that day, I will only be half the person Laura Archer is, or a lot of you are, because it's really about the people in the front trenches doing the real work, and that's what we're trying to make this happen. So I guess some of you might have heard about my press conference a couple of weeks ago. I'm the crazy guy that's trying to compete against Mr. Bolsilli and Blackberry. On the one side, $2.3 billion. And on the other side, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, $1.7 billion. So it's about $4 billion against, I don't know what, maybe $40 in my pocket. But you know what? Ideas change the world. And what we're trying to do here, and even if we pull off this dream, I as an owner and my investors will never get to sit in the front row of our building. Because the front row of the Toronto legacy will be only for children. Big brothers, big sisters, scholarship recipients, and minor hockey teams. Because I think that's the legacy that we in Canada and in Toronto should aspire to be. CEOs, second row, kids, front row. I think a lot of you that are into sports, you think about the steroid scandals, you think about so many things. And we kind of forget that life and dreams start with a child. That either looks at a hockey player or a piano or whatever the case may be, and that little dream is born. And I think we have to focus on that. So I guess that's one of our principles. Our second principle is that 25% of net profits every single year, children's charities, scholarships, cancer research. Not just in Canada, but worldwide. For example, the Children's Aid Society. So kids in the east side of Vancouver, in Jane and Finch, up in our First Nations, can have proper medical care, can have a proper scholarship one day. Terry Fox Foundation for Cancer Research. The Herbert H. Carnegie Future Aces Fund will be distributing scholarships to kids across Canada and also in the 24 US-based NHL cities. So we'll support kids at Jane and Finch, but we'll also give scholarships to kids in the south side of Chicago, the Bronx, New York, East LA or Compton. And the last thing I guess I could say about that is that we're looking to build a 30,000 seat stadium, one third bigger than any other arena in the league, because Toronto, as the number one market in the world for hockey, can certainly do that. And that allows us to be able to have 15,000 seats in every game of the year, $50. So the regular working man does not have to spend a month's paycheck to take his child to a hockey game. And you know what? I love the Leafs. I'm not a Leaf hater. I've been, I grew up in this city. I was born in Toronto. I lived in Mexico as a child. And I guess maybe because I went through the immigrant experience when I first came back to Canada, I realized that some kids need a little bit more inspiration. And that's really the reason I've been doing this here. I've been coming here with Miss Canada for three years. Some of you know me as a short tie guy that's always, I guess, has the cross to bear of being here with beautiful women. But you know what? People like Mariana Volante, who's Miss Canada right now, three years ago, she started a charity supporting kids in Brazil. So I respect her, not because she's Miss Canada. I respect her because she's trying to give back. And over the last seven years, we've talked to 10,000 kids with seven Miss Universe Canadas, and that's the message. Don't ever let anyone tell you what you can and cannot do. And I recognize the challenges that I'm up against, but I really believe that if you want something, you make it happen. That front row, and I'll finish on this, will be named after Herbert H. Carnegie. Mr. Carnegie was a Toronto boy born in the 1920s in Toronto, Jamaican parents who wanted to play for the Leafs. And he was good enough because Sean Valavo, the legend, said that he was as good as I was. And in 1947, the year Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in baseball, Herb Carnegie never got to play in the NHL because he was only 10 years later that a black man played in the NHL. And instead of being bitter and hateful about the lack of opportunity, he spent the last 50 years of his life going to schools, starting hockey schools, and telling children that what happened to me does not have to happen to you. Because Toronto, Canada, in today's age, I humbly think is Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. Because now I'm not judged by my last name or my race. I should only be judged by my character and what we can do. So hopefully one day, I would love to have all of you at the opening game, maybe in three years, of the Toronto Legacy Hockey Club, our legacy to the world. Thank you very much. 
Well done, Andrew. Thank you, Moses. Right. Thanks a lot. And, and, Andrew. Yes. Yeah, we'll have that picture. Thank you. Uh, you're in luck. We, we just happen to have a billionaire in the house here. Uh, an amazing story. I, uh, I think they need you to take a picture. Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I should say that we are talking to a lot of investors. We actually have more interest now that we require. But now it's about finding the right partners because of our unique philosophy for the team. So it's really more about all of you finding about it, torontolegacy.com, and just tell your friends. This is what we're trying to do. Hey. Just a little guy from Toronto. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Moses. <laughs>